Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and I am joined by Scott Wasson, former tech report and now AMD. Scott, how long have you been with AMD so far? Just since the beginning of the year, so about three, three and a half months, so yeah. Very cool. And we're at this Capsaicin event here at GDC. Before getting into that though, all this coverage from GDC 2016 is brought to you by Raw Fury's platformer game, Goner, which you see on screen now. So what's, uh, what's sort of the main thing with the displays? We saw this LG display you're telling me about. Can you tell me more about that and tell people why anyone should care about a display right now? Oh yeah, well the, the coolest demo we have here for, for me, and I, you know, I'm just into this stuff, I'm just geeking out about this, <laughs> is we have a, a LG OLED TV, it's a 55 inch TV, and it's an HDR capable TV. And what we're showing is a particular video that finally shows off We've had some demos of HDR, but this one finally comes together, all the elements, to show off what we can do with the next generation of displays. So this thing is an HDR content video. It's 4K resolution. It is high dynamic range. It is high color gamut, wide color gamut, so it's more co colors you haven't seen on the display before. It is 60 frames per second, so it's super fluid. It pans and stuff, and it doesn't chink, 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 you know? And, and, and it's it's tone mapped for the particular TV that it's being shown on. So it's color correct and, and range correct for that display. And so what you'll see when you look at it, it's something we, we can't put on camera because all your equipment doesn't, isn't as good, right? But, but it is just the best thing I've ever seen on an electronic display. And we're able to show it running on one of our Polaris GPUs, little one that we demoed in Sonoma, uh, being decoded, videos being decoded in real time. And then uh, sent to the TV over an HDMI 2.0 port. So it's sort of the latest of everything. And in this one case, this little video loop shows you the potential for something that we've been talking about in terms of color gamut maps and math and all that. But, but it's here on display, so I'm happy to have it. And this is different from the one that we saw at CES, is that right? It's, it's really progress on the same front. Uh, there, there wasn't a video this good matched to a display that was high frame rate that we had to show there. And, and so this one's just better. So do the, on the gaming side, do developers have to do anything to access, you know, to make use of the displays? Uh, yeah, so the interesting thing about the gaming side, and we don't have a, we have a demo now, but we don't have any games yet running in, in HDR. But the interesting thing about that is that because DirectX 11 is a high precision uh, API internally that requires lots of bits of precision per color channel that really what game developers need to do is simply tone map to the higher dynamic range displays. All their lighting engines, so there's goodness in them right now and, and you're not seeing it because your display isn't capable. So as this stuff moves along, I, I expect that we'll see games that can tone map to HDR displays and give us more range and more color and not be like that annoying bloom that we had in the past that didn't really work out because the displays weren't capable enough. I think now we're finally going to have that promise, uh, you know, realized. And, and seeing just seeing the first video that does it, you get excited about what's coming. What's the, what's the resolution of that display out there? It's 4K, so I believe it's 3840 by 2160. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was curious because I almost, when I saw them at CES, or the, the sort of earlier version at CES, one thing we were talking about between our staff was I'd almost rather have the color than 4K. If, if it's strictly between 4K or 1080 with the higher, the oh, yeah, higher yeah. poly color. Oh, I totally agree. This is me personally, but I would much rather have high dynamic range, high frame rate, wide color gamut than just more resolution, right. right? I think those things are more impactful and unfortunately there aren't a lot of examples of that in the wild, which is why I'm happy to show it here. But when you see it, you start thinking about your next TV purchase. Regardless, I just bought a TV and I saw it a couple days ago in the lab for the first time and I was like, oh, <laughs> like, I don't know, man, like this summer, new TV. That's, that's the problem with working in the tech industry. It is, but, it, but it's a beautiful thing. Let's uh, let's roll over to frame times for a second. So completely different topic. Yeah. But you are one of the you and maybe Ryan Trout are among the pioneers for frame time testing. Our viewers have seen us do these what we call one percent low and zero point one percent low metrics. I've kind of explained some of it, but would you give a top level overview of why you, especially now at AMD versus Tech Report, think that frame time testing is important? Right. Well, um, the work I did at the Tech Report. Uh, 
was basically the basis for it's why I'm here, right? right. Raja Kaduri, who, who runs the Radeon Technologies Group, saw that, liked what I was doing, and asked me to come and help at AMD. So I think there's a pretty strong endorsement there, right? And, and the idea behind it was a simple one. We tested games for years, and there were times when you play two games, and the average FPS number or the low FPS number between or sorry, play one game with two GPUs. Those numbers, the FPS numbers look the same, but the, the experience was not the same. You, you realize that. And, and I, I, at one point, started looking into that and realized it's a very simple thing. You have to deliver every frame on time to deliver smooth animation. And an average, conducted over a period of time, masks variance that happens from frame to frame. And, and so you need to have a better metric. You need to look at the entire distribution of frame times and ask the question, you know, was, was I getting the frame on time every time as consistently as possible? And, and so we built some metrics around that. And I think one of them you guys are using is based on a kind of a percentile thing. You know where that came from? I was doing database benchmarking for servers. And in servers for databases, you got to get every query back quickly. Well, it turns out that like you can take some cheap little Xeons and, and you can get a really good rate in a database benchmark, but there are some queries that will take a long time to get back. And so you're standing at the ATM machine, it takes a long time, you're mad. You get the big, big Xeons with the cash and everything, and, and okay, it turns out that in that case, uh, even if your rate is lower, you eliminate those long latency transactions. I started thinking about that in the context of graphics, it turns out that what you want to do is deliver every frame consistently, just like you want to do low latency transactions in a database. So we just brought over this percentile thing and asked the question. Uh, it's kind of like the percentile is, okay, 99th percentile frame time is 99% of all frames came back in this amount of time or less. And, and you can kind of summarize general performance by picking a, a smart cutoff point and doing, uh, you know, a, measuring that. And, and so you get a summary of this entire distribution of frame times. It's super complex in one number that I think is superior to an FPS average, right? Right. So, and that's what you guys are doing. And you've converted them back, the frame time back into FPS, I think, in some of those graphs. That's right, yeah, that's right. And, and, and then just play it along with the average. And what you see is that your, your 99th percentile is always lower than your average, which tells you that the average is not really summarizing everything you, you, you know. It's nice to kind of get toward where things get hairy and get a sense of that, right? Right, yeah, that's one of the things we've seen. A very uh, recent specific instance was with the G3258 and uh, GTA 5. So the G3258 with some settings really struggles with GTA 5 more than maybe a, 70, uh, a 760K or something like that. And the reason was because even though the average was higher, the one, the lower percent, the 99, 99.1 percentiles were, or 0.9, were so low that it was effectively unplayable. Right. And yeah, that's, that's a small cache CPU with only two threads, two right. cores, right? And, and so you have some constraints there. And when, when it hits, when the rubber hits the road, when you have the, the hardest frames to generate, then that relatively weak hardware kind of penalizes you, even though it has a high rate because it's, you know, IPC is okay and I'll we'll get complicated here, but but it's really not the only performance property that you want is a high rate. You need to be tolerant uh, of difficult situations. And if you can do that, then you deliver smooth performance. Right. So I think we'll, uh, we'll wrap up here. Scott, it sounds like a lot of the work you're planning to do at AMD is just now beginning. We've only been here a couple months. Yeah. So we, we certainly look forward to it. Uh, I've enjoyed reading Tech Report, you know, all the years you worked on it. And uh, hopefully you guys found this educational. Hit the links in the description below for more information and for content coverage of the specific Capstation event. We'll see you all next time.